Welcome to another video. In this one, I'd like to touch on a few of the things that I'm going to take with me on my Alaskan cruise, which is coming up at the end of May 2023. I've done a little bit of research. Now, I've been there once, but it was many years ago with my kids and my mother and my sister and my wife and and uh, you know it wasn't really ideal to take photographs and because it was so long ago I was shooting with a Nikon F5 film camera and I took a whopping I think either five rolls or seven rolls of 35 exposure actually I think I took five rolls of black and white 35 exposure and two rolls of color 24 exposure because after all going to Alaska for two weeks why would you need any more than 200 shots right how times have changed I don't remember the lenses that I took I'm pretty sure I took the Nikon 80 to 200 f2.8 because that was a lens I was using a lot at the time but I honestly I, I, I don't remember now but I want to share with you some of the ones, some of the, the gear that I'm taking this time. It's far different. My wife's coming. No kids. We're going to meet up with some friends of ours that we know from Kansas City. But they're not going to stop me from taking photographs. We're going on a couple of different excursions. One, I think, in uh, Icy Straight Point and one in Skagway, I believe, which are supposed to be designed for photographers. You know, we'll see. It'll probably be a bunch of people with their, with their uh, iPhones. But who knows? Hopefully they'll take us to some decent locations and I can get some shots. First thing I want to mention that I'm going to take is this, if you can see it, Shimoda backpack. I don't remember the model number. I want to say it's the Explorer version 2 or version 3. But anyway, if you can see, it'll fit my camera in a few different lenses. The one thing that I did learn was that should something happen to where I can't take this whole bag onto the plane with me at any given time, there's going to be one flight it's only one flight I'd be worried about from Seattle to Vancouver. We're going on a small plane. I should be able to take this bag with me. But if not, this here actually pops out. And up in here I have a, it, it's not the greatest. It's a little case that comes with it. A little bag that you can put it around. But at least I can carry on my camera and my lenses and, and not have to allow somebody else to walk off on them. You're a photographer, you know that's the big danger of, you know, baggage handlers wandering off and taking your camera and your lenses. My wife is always kind of patient with me when I say, ah, oh, I got to get in line and get, make sure I can get an overhead. I got to get an overhead. I got to make sure my, my bag can get on. And she's just dawdling along. Okay, whenever, I'll, I'll get on when I can get on. And, and I'm always trying to be, as soon as my number's called, you know, our, our range or whatever they call it. Uh, I'm always trying to get on to make sure I can get this bag with me. So that's the bag I'm going to take. My daughter very nicely bought me some gloves for uh, my birthday recently. And it's the ones where the fingers pop out so that you can wear your gloves and and still have your fingers come out so that was nice so I'm going to take these gloves I haven't used them before obviously but we're going to give it a shot and uh, in a way I hope the weather's cold enough to where I can use these gloves because that means there's snow on the mountains right hopefully I don't really want to go and not see snow on the at least the mountain tops so hopefully the gloves will come in handy. I'm going to take a couple of case filters. I'm going to take the polarizer for sure. And I'll probably take a 
Well, I'll take my three stop, six stop, and 10, 10 stop neutral density filter. I don't know that I'm going to take a tripod, so other than the polarizer, I don't know. I mean, I might be able to get away with a three stop um, without a tripod because I have IBIS in my camera and all my lenses. But uh, the other thing I'm going to take is this little Peak Design bag, which it's a nice little bag. Unfortunately, the second time I used it, the zipper broke on this little section right here. It's not a major problem, but I was a little annoyed that I'd use it the second time I ever tried to open the zipper. The little zipper in the back here broke. It does, it opens up nicely and it's a nice little bag. And inside I'll have two extra batteries. So I'm going to take three batteries with me. I'll take some wipes. Some fresh wipes I'll take with me, a little brush to brush off the sensor if I need to. Got a couple different brushes that uh, brush off the sensor a little bit. Just you want to touch it lightly. And a couple little repair items in here in case you need to repair something. The other thing that's in that's very important that I'm going to take. You get these on Amazon. It's a product put out by a company called Kimtech. And what these little tissue things do is they don't wipe off your lens in a, in a way you would think. But if you get droplets, rain droplets or something on the tip of your lens, on, on your lens, Rather than smear it around, you just kind of dot this off and it, and it soaks up the water rather nicely off your lenses. And in a place like Alaska, I could see where these things would, would come in handy. So I'm going to take a bunch of these little Kimtech things. A whole box of them was like $7. So I, because I shoot a lot of landscapes down at the ocean and I get a lot of ocean spray, I use these all the time. And these are, these are highly recommended. Kimtech. I think it's K I M. T-E-C-H maybe. Highly recommend it. I'll take my uh, case with my storage. I'm going to take five Sony XQD 120 gigabyte 440 Sony cards. So I'll have at least five of those with me instead of five rolls of film. These will handle a little bit more storage than five rolls of film, I think. I'll probably end up taking a, a, the sensor swab and sensor cleaner, even though I'm going to clean it right before I go away. Um, it probably, I'll probably still take it with me just in case of an emergency to swab that sensor if I need to. Hopefully I won't have to, but that'll probably go with me. The camera that I'm going to be using is the one I'm filming on right now. I have a Nikon Z7 II, which I've mentioned many times in my videos. For stills and for portraits, you know, I just, I love that camera. It, it's hard to beat for, for, uh, for stills, for a, you know, a camera priced in the range that that is. It's hard to beat that camera. For sports, wildlife, some other people might have different opinions. I don't know that, I think a, a Z9 or maybe the upcoming Z8 might be better for that type of thing. Uh, but for landscapes in Alaska, it's, it's hard to beat the Z7 II. Now, the other thing I want to mention is in all these little products that I talk about or mention, you know, my, I have a very small channel, obviously. I'm not uh, sponsored by anyone. No one's paying me to say any of this stuff. This is all my, my own opinion of everything. So, um, like when I highly recommend those Kimtech things, they didn't send me a box and no, no, I bought them myself. I actually, uh, I think it was uh, Nick Page recommended them. I saw that on one of his videos and so I bought them and he was right. Uh, those things are really good. So uh, the Nikon Z7 II, the lenses, what I finally decided on. One tip when you travel, depending on where you go, 
always go back, if you've traveled before, go back and look at the focal length that you normally take images at when you travel. That'll give you a big heads up on what lens or lenses you should take. Now, I know there's a lot of people that take one camera and one lens, they take a 28 millimeter or 50 millimeter or whatever they take and they're off and that's it. That's all well and good if that's your style. That's not my style. I don't want to go with 10 lenses and, and overburden myself carrying a bunch of stuff around or even worry about it all being stolen. And so I'm trying to limit it to no more than three lenses. I could probably get away with two, but I'm going to, I'm going to take three. The one lens that I'm sure will be the workhorse, the one that I'll use the most, is this Nikon 24 to 120 f4 s lens. This is a beautiful lens for travel. I've taken it to Europe and I ended up taking probably 80% of the images that I took on that on that uh, trip was taken with this with this lens. It's a beautiful lens. You know, for for, for travel, it's it's a uh, Highly recommend it. The other lens that I'm going to take, if I own the Nikon 100 to 400, I would I would take that lens, but I don't own it. I just didn't want to spend the money to uh, to buy it. Instead, I have this Tamron 70 to 300 zoom lens. Now it's a very variable aperture like the uh, Nikon 100 to 400 is. It's f4.5 to 6.3. And it gets to 6.3 uh, pretty quickly. So for landscapes, that's fine because you're going to be shooting at f8, maybe f10 or 11 a lot of times anyway. It's not really designed for low light. It's not a good low light. And quite honestly, I use this uh, quite a bit at my grandson's soccer and um, baseball games. I mean, they're five years old and three years old, so it's not, you know, like I'm going to watch a major league game. But I use this quite often, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at understanding Nikon's focus system, and I still, with this lens, I, I miss shots. It, it hunts and searches quite a bit. For landscapes, it would be fine. Again, for sports, it could be some with, you know, because of the Nikon Z7. It could be some because of this lens. I don't know. But for, for landscapes, I, I'm hoping this will do me fine once I get beyond the 120, mil, 120 millimeter focal length. Uh, I don't imagine I'm going to use this a lot, but I'm sure I'll use it some. So this is going to come with me. And the last lens that I debated, which if you look at my last video, I was trying to decide between the Nikon 50 millimeter S lens, the 18 F lens, which is what I'm filming on, and this Voigtlander 50 millimeter F2 Apo lens. And I've decided on this one. And the reason why I would take a 50 millimeter lens, a prime lens, one, a, to have a prime lens with me. I like shooting with primes. B is because the last few times that I've traveled on river cruises over in Europe, and then we also took a trip to Ireland, I didn't really document the ship or the people that I was with or the people that surrounded me or the crew or anything like that. This last time I had, had decided I was going to make a little bit more concerted effort to do that, and I still didn't do it. Did a poor job of that. Granted, you know, the Viking river ships are far different than a big princess cruise ship. So the cruise ships might lend itself a little bit more to that type of thing of documenting what the ship looks like, some of the people that are on the ship almost like a street photography type thing, but on the ship. And that's what I'm going to use this lens for, to document around the ship. I'm sure I'll take it into town when I go in town to either Skagway or Juneau or wherever, 
this I'll use to try to get some good black and white images. Lastly, I'm going to take my wife. She's going to go with me. She won't let me go without her. Then we're going to go with a couple friends of ours that we met from Kansas City on, a, on one of the river cruises. And we seem to hook up when we go on vacations now. It's when we see them. We say, hey, you want to go here? You want to go here? Yeah, let's go. And now they've brought along on these last couple of trips, they've brought along uh, friends of theirs from Kansas City. So despite them being Chiefs fans, we allow them to come, <laughs> to come with us. The first time we went, I went with uh, Patriots fans. And, uh, you know, that was rough. Being a Dolphins fan, a lot of you people have no idea what I'm talking about. But for those of you who do, a Dolphins fan and a Patriots fan on the same cruise, I, I don't know. Chiefs fans I can tolerate a little bit more. But, you know, those Patriots fans, I'm just kidding. Maybe. Anyway, that's what I'm going to take. If anybody has any other ideas... I'm, I don't think I'm going to take a tripod. I have a little travel tripod, which maybe I'll stick in the bag. I just don't know that I want to be carting it around. I, I, I think I want more freedom to just wander. But anyway, if you have any other uh, ideas, suggestions, I'm all ears. Also, if there's a topic somebody wants covered, I mean, there's just so much information on the Internet and uh, so many photography uh, channels. I hate to just repeat what's already been said a million times. So I, I really struggle to come up with some unique idea or some place to go that somebody hasn't already gone. That's why I did a few of the infrared videos. It was because you don't see quite as many of those. Oh, that's the other thing. I may or may not take an infrared camera. I'm, that's the one thing that I'm still debating on. And the only reason why I, I might not take it is because there's a good chance that it's going to be overcast and rainy a lot of the times that I'm there. And that really doesn't lend itself too much to infrared from, from what I found. You kind of need a, a nice blue sky. And we may get that hopefully a day or two there. I don't know that I want to, I want to take it. If somebody has another idea on that, that's done infrared up in Alaska and thinks, yes, I should take it, please leave a comment and let me know. Otherwise, again, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take good care.